Hey folks, it's Jim. Welcome back to another edition of RV with the Tanners. Hey, today I'm pretty excited because uh, Battleborn Batteries has reached out to me and would like me to be uh, involved with their launch of a white paper here on October 14th, Wednesday, October 14th. And I'm going to be able to provide you with some data here to my audience uh, on some pretty exciting white paper data benchmarking that Battleborn has done with their batteries, their 100 amp hour batteries versus the competition AGM Group 31 batteries, which are I think about 105 amp hours each. Um, this comes at a pretty good time of the year in fall. Uh, a lot of folks are going out either fall camping and some of you might be going out hunting. And typically at night, uh, especially here in Oregon, I'm sure back somewhere east, at night the temperatures start to plummet. Maybe it's 40, 45 degrees during the day, but at night those temperatures could easily drop below 30 or even 20 degrees. And that's a pretty significant drop in temperature. What you need to know is that these batteries, the Battleborn batteries, while they will, because of their BMS, shut off charging at 25 degrees or lower, they will still operate below that number. Again, you have to come above 25 degrees. You have to actually go back to 30, above 32 degrees in order for the batteries to start charging again. But they do not suffer from below 30, below 20 degrees on their performance. And that's the majority of the reason for this white paper and realistically why they're talking about it. Because a lot of folks get that, the rumors that the batteries won't perform below 30 degrees or 32 degrees after freezing. That's just simply not true. So we're gonna go into a lot of technical details today. Um, I'm gonna be doing a little different than I normally do with my YouTube. Normally it's me speaking all the time. I'm gonna cut away every now and then and let Battleborn actually speak to you and explain very technical reasons for you. I will also do something that you haven't seen me do in a video and that's read from a piece of paper. I'm gonna actually read some of the setup for what the testing underwent and there's a lot of details there that I don't wanna say wrong because I didn't memorize it 100%. Uh, so uh, give me a little grace. I'm gonna take out a piece of paper and I'm gonna read some stuff to you. I'll make myself small and then I'll put it up on the screen so that you can see it as well. So it's just a little different than how I normally do things. But I think and uh, for the reason behind this is I don't wanna say something incorrectly and then you come back to me in my comments and say, that's not true, Jim, this and that. So uh, just give me a little grace and let me kind of read a little bit of stuff. I'll put up some PowerPoint presentations as well and kind of outline how Battleborn goes through that. The ranges of this test are gonna start what they typically call room temperature. And I believe that's 67 to 72 degrees. And then they'll start making increments down from there. The first video I'm gonna cut away to is basically how batteries can do discharging with resistance on the battery. And if you take a greater amperage, like 30, 50, 80 amps out of that battery, how it doesn't perform as well. We spent a lot of time talking about the benefits of our lithium iron phosphate batteries over lead acid batteries. For example, the internal resistance of our lithium iron phosphate batteries is much lower than that of lead acid batteries. This can manifest in a lot of different ways, but most prominently in the so-called Pukert effect. What this means for lead acid batteries is that if you try to draw high power out of a lead acid battery, the internal resistance causes a voltage sag that means that the battery will cut off sooner than you think. So, if you try to draw a large power load from a lead acid battery, you will actually get less energy out of that battery. That is what's known as the Pukert effect. Obviously, he knows much more about this than I do. All right, so now I'm gonna flash up three PowerPoint uh, foils for you, and we're gonna walk through the setup for this demonstration. The first one, it's uh, comprised of two battery banks were tested. The AGM systems were two group 31 12 volt 105 amp hour AGM batteries connected in parallel for 210 amp hours. The Battleborn system was two 12 volt 100 amp hour Battleborn batteries connected in parallel for a total of 200 amp hours. And then each battery bank was connected to a Victron Energy Multibus. For a series of tests, the batteries were fully charged at room temperature and then were cooled to the target temperature range. The temperature ranges in this set were 67 to 72 degrees Fahrenheit, which they're calling room temperature. The second was 33 to 37 degrees Fahrenheit. The four, third was 26 to 30 Fahrenheit. And the final test is 13 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. The Battleborn battery bank was discharged down to 11.8 volts 
and the EGM battery bank was discharged down to 12.2 volts. As for the 50% depth of discharge, commonly known as DOD, recommended by the manufacturer. Now we're going to actually get to some of the testing. Uh, for the results, rather than to go through all of them, there's four tests and they run through four different amp draws, 10, 30, 50, and 80. Uh, so what we're going to do now in this video is cover 30 amp draw and the 80 amp draw. Uh, I'm going to put a link down below to the actual white paper, of course, so you're going to read all of the details there, all the setup, the equipment, exactly what went through uh, Battleborn's testing. But I'm going to go through at a very high level and just kind of walk you through two of the top tests. Again, it's going to be the 30 amp draw and then it will be the 80 amp draw. So if you look at the 30 amp draw on the AGM batteries, again, they had a total of 210 amp hours uh, at the room temperature, 67 to 72 degrees. They were able to at 30 amps and that's about what, uh, 360 watts, something like that. And I know in our RV, we could pull easily that much uh, for an, an air conditioner, which we can, a uh, hairdryer, a microwave, uh, miscellaneous stuff all over the place. So realistically, you can get up to that number pretty darn quickly. And then some people actually have like residential refrigerators, so they pull a bunch of power as well when that compressor kicks in. Um, so if you take a look at the results here, the lithium batteries, uh, versus the AGM batteries. AGM pulled in 63.27 amp hours out of their stated 210. That's not even a third of what their stated number is, again, at a 30 amp draw. If you look at the Battleborn numbers, they provided up to 206.98 amp hours. That's more than what they actually advertise. And you guys all know the Battleborn batteries actually have more than the uh, 100 amps per battery but their, um, bad, their BMS then cuts that off so that it has a little bit of extra in there so you don't drain it too much and damage it. Now we're looking at the 67 to 72 temperature range still, but now we're drawing 80 amps. So now you can see the AGM systems actually uh, were able to perform up to only 11.2 amp hours, whereas the uh, lithium batteries are able to provide 190.81. Remember earlier the Pukert effect and how when you're drawing a larger number, well now it's the 80 amps, it's a bigger impact on the actual uh, ability of the battery to provide all that power. Uh, so it really starts to make sense here when you see it at room temperature. We'll wait until we get a little bit further and we start to drop down in temperatures because that has a big, big impact. Temperatures have plummeted. How are your batteries doing? Let's take a look at the tests. All right, so in the next test, uh, we're gonna be comparing from 33 to 37 degrees. A little chillier, so I had to put a hat on. So now let's take a look at the AGM batteries. The AGM batteries are now outputting 42.02 amp hours out of their stated 210, starting to really start to impact them. However, if you take a look at the Battleborn batteries, they're still putting out almost 100% of their stated, so they're at 199.28 amp hours. They haven't lost anything other than a little bit of warmth. It's still cold, but the batteries are still been able to produce the power that they've stated, which is phenomenal for the investment that we've put into these batteries. Up next, let's take a look at the 80 amp draw. It's not starting to look too good for those AGM <laughs> batteries. Take a look at this number. Now at an 80 amp draw at 33 to 37 degrees, they're only outputting 11.23 amp hours. On converse of that, if you take a look at the same setup, the 33 to 37 degrees, the Battleborn batteries are outputting 190.77 amp hours. Huge difference. And this is a pretty important number here, folks, when you're starting to get down on those low numbers. Up next, 26 to 30 degrees. This is a big one here, folks, because we're approaching the point where the battery, the Battleborn batteries will turn off charging. Okay, folks, we're back and woo, it's getting cold outside, 26 to 30 degrees. This is a big one, like I said before, because why? Because the Battleborn batteries will shut off charging at 25. This is where everybody kind of gets spun up in the weeds, but let's talk about from 30 to 26 degrees. This is a big chill factor if you're out camping and you want your heater to work, maybe you got an electric blanket and you want your batteries to be able to perform as well, right? I know I would. Okay, so if we look at the 30 amp draw from 26 to 30 degrees, the AGM batteries will output 41.23 amps per hour, or a total of 41.23 amp hours. Not so good, but if you look at that compared against the Battleborn, Battleborn's doing 178.18 amp hours out of their targeted 200 amp hours. That's a big number. We're getting a lot of amp hours for what we paid for. Okay, 
So here's the big, big number. It's a shocking one here when I saw this number. And again, if you don't trust me, go to the white paper. It's all linked down below. When we move to 26 degrees to 30 degrees, and we're pulling 80 amps, now think your refrigerator's running, your heater's running, your uh, something, maybe an electric blanket going, your fireplace is going in your RV. A lot of amps are being pulled out of that battery. The AGM batteries at that temperature can output 0.3 amp hours. Total, <laughs> I'm not kidding, 0.3 amp hours. That's nothing, it's like they're not even there. Why even have a battery at that point? And converse to that, if you take a look at what the uh, lithium batteries are doing from Battleborn, 175.3 amp hours. It's like they didn't even blink in this freezing cold temperature. Okay, we got one more to go. We're gonna take a look at the 13 to 17 degrees. Okay, up next. 13 to 18 degrees. I don't know why you fools even camp like this, but I guess some of you do. We don't, but you do, so I'm doing this video for you. Let's talk about 13 to 18 degrees with AGM batteries. Uh, the output that they're gonna do, pulling 30 amps, is 31.94 amp hours. Not a lot. Uh, you better bundle up. With your lithium batteries, you're gonna get 166.21 amp hours. Hey, let's get that fireplace going and get some marshmallows out because it's a warm and toasty. Last one, okay, whew. What if we're pulling 80 amps per hour? That's a big draw, right? Take a look what the AGM does. Basically nothing. You might as well hook up the truck and go home. You're only getting 0.65 amp hours out of 210, that's nothing. Okay, Battleborn. Congratulations, your lithium batteries are giving us 154.45 amp hours. That's amazing amount of amp hours coming out of the batteries at 13 to 18 degrees. Brr! Again, why do you guys camp like this? <laughs> I don't know, but some of you do, so we're doing videos for you. So I think what you've seen is the Battleborn lithium batteries can perform substantially better than an AGM battery across the board, but realistically as those temperatures start to plummet. Okay, so what can you do? So Battleborn has a heating wrap that goes around the batteries. It's a 12 volt version, and then it can then take your batteries up above freezing so that you can then charge them, whatever amperage that you want, 10, 30, 50, 80, whatever you have available to you from your converter, and charge your batteries back up, and then use them again maybe at night when you wanna um, not have a generator running or something of that nature. They also have coming in the future, uh, this is not on the market yet, but they're gonna have a version of their battery that will charge, or excuse me, that can heat itself. And that heat will either come from the power from the battery, the 12 volt battery, or from your converter. Again, this product is not available yet. It is coming soon. Uh, so you can go to Battleborn's website and sign up to be on their email list uh, to get more information when that becomes available. A final note on heating those batteries, folks. Uh, don't try to use a lead acid heating blanket or uh, standard heating blankets you might have in your home. They're not manufactured for lithium and they could cause potential damage uh, to your battery and to your RV or boat, whatever you have these in. Uh, so if you wanna look into having one of these heating blankets, make sure you buy the uh, one that's approved by Battleborn directly from their website. It, all that information will be down below. So as you remember from my Battleborn battery install on our RV, if you haven't seen that, you can click up here. I'll put a link to it. Uh, when we put the six battle warns in our RV. But jumping back to this one, as far as temperature is concerned, at the 15 degree mark, you would need uh, six of those AGM batteries uh, at uh, to equivalent of 560 amp hours to equate to one battle born battery. Um, to put that in another way, a lot of folks have more than one battery because like if you have two battle born batteries in your system, which would classify yourself as 200 amp hours, you're gonna need uh, 12 of those AGM batteries, and that's gonna weigh over 750 pounds. I don't have that much cargo capability in our RV. 750 pounds of AGM batteries, or 62 pounds, 31 pounds each, for some lithium battery, lithium powered batteries from that point. It was difficult for me to say for some reason. So I think in this video, you guys have seen some pretty good information. Again, I'm gonna put a link down below to the actual white paper so you can go check it all out. If I misspoke on something, my apologies. There was a lot of technical details here. Um, I strongly recommend that you go to the white paper down below and read through the whole thing. Um, I just want to thank Battleborn for giving me the opportunity to do this video along with their announcement that's coming out. Uh, I'm pleased to continue the partnership with you and we look forward to it. 
If you haven't had a chance, folks, uh, please take a moment and hit the subscribe button and click that little bell so that you can be reminded when we post new videos. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.